Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Structural Plants. It's my first video. Constantly looking on YouTube for new content about Nepenthes and different plants. And you know, I just got to the point where I was like, maybe I should just make my own channel. So, we will show, I will show you some of my plants. I uh, actually have a lot. But um, I'm just going to show a couple of my more proud ones so far. Uh, the other ones are pretty small. Uh, I'll probably show those in like future videos and stuff. But um, I'll just get straight to it. This is uh, Ventricosa by Dubia. Uh, I got this one pretty small. And it's really like shaped up pretty crazy. So, I mean really came out nice still has a lot of growing to do I just repotted it tried to put like um, live moss on it but it kind of died pretty quickly now what these uh, what they're in is actually like uh, something I'm trying out which is called a I'm calling it a humidity chamber um, so it's just you know some substrate on the bottom and then uh, moss and wood bark, and uh, I usually have the I have all my nepenthes indoors. None of them are outdoors. I'm just outside because it's way better lighting. Um, but what it is is when the light hits the chamber on the bottom, it makes a lot of humidity and keeps the plant moist and the roots moist. Um, not damp, not waterlogged, nothing like that. It's uh, something that I'm trying, and so far the plants are really loving it. Getting really big. Uh, this is just the standard Ventricosa, but it's looking pretty nice. Right now it's winter in California, or whatever we really call winter in California. But um, these have gotten pretty big. I got this plant also when it was really small. It's really shaping up now. So, the same thing with here is just, they all have different types of stuff. I'm just trying out different methods. Um, this here is uh, sand, uh, sphagnum moss, and wood bark. And what's kind of crazy is that I got sphagnum moss from Home Depot, and it's starting to sprout um, live moss in there. So, it's kind of cool to see. And I put live moss in this one, and it's it seems to be living still so it'd be kind of cool to see what happens with that um then right here is i'm not sure what this one is i got this one from home depot uh way smaller than this it's really getting bigger now uh, i put live sphagnum moss on this one as a dressing and then it uh, came with a little bit of moss by itself and i just put it on the top and it seems to be growing as well uh, if you guys know what it is, comment down below. That'd be kind of cool to know. And then, you know, I just had to. I just put the, the famous Venus flytrap here. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Everybody knows what this is. This is the most famous of all carnivorous plants. Uh, it's kind of weird because I always watch a lot of videos about this and there's like always different like water methods. Uh, this one I do actually keep in outside, kind of, but my house is a little different, so it has like an indoor-outdoor kind of thing, so it just sits kind of outside, but not really, but it's technically in dormancy, but it doesn't seem like it, I don't know, but I've been doing it for, I think I've had this plant for about three, four years now, but anyways, what I was talking about is that people always say like, you know, just never keep it waterlogged, but these plants live in a bog. Um, conditions so of course it would always need to be sitting in water and I've been doing that for four years and never had the plant die down matter of fact it's gotten way bigger sorry about that the dogs went pretty crazy uh, but like I was saying never had the plant die out um, yeah I mean it's it's obviously one of my first plants one of my most favorite plants so that's why I really feel like I need to put it in here. That's just the beginning of a video and 
beginning of my channel so I started off right since these are carnivorous plants uh, I do have like a Baikal Karata, a Viking uh, it's a cross but I can't exactly remember the name uh, but I'll definitely do a video on that because it uh, is in like a vivarium style so there are like living frogs in there um, it's pretty humid I tried doing this type of method, but it didn't really work out well. My house is definitely not hot enough for Baikal Karata and a Viking. They're more of a lowland. So, yeah, I'll do a video on that soon. Um, I got a couple other plants that are on their way. So, I'll, you know, I'll try to put way more content. Uh, like I said, I'm always struggling to find more content about these plants or just, you know, like unique stuff like this uh, and do kind of like habitat builds and stuff like that uh, I'll do a video on how to do this and how much this costs it's actually pretty cheap don't don't think it's like crazy expensive I really like things to look visually appealing so that's why they're like this other than the pots you know kind of low dollared on the pots but I think it looks fine uh, this one like I said Home Depot is your friend. There's no need to go buy extremely expensive spot sphagnum moss. Um, sphagnum moss at like Home Depot, and it's like good quality stuff. You just have to check in the orchid or orchid area. Um, and it's like four bucks. So, you know, these plants can virtually grow in any type of moss. So, I'll make videos, but this is like the if you know what like Exoterra mosses jungle moss this I'm just trying it out uh, don't don't eat me alive um, but um, that's what's underneath this sphagnum moss it's the jungle moss and it seems to be growing really well I've had it in here for I think like two months now so yeah and then this one is growing in a uh, different style moss as well so yeah hope to see you guys soon thanks for checking it out